like I'm like just in this spacesuit walking on a planet flying through the universe. You are. Literally. Your, like, your spacesuit is the atmosphere. Like that's real? That's really what's happening here, right? That is really what's happening. There's no doubt about it. Nobody, nobody can argue. Well, actually, somebody out there might try to argue. But they're, they're deceiving themselves. Because we're in space right now. We are undeniably in space. And we don't know how long we're going to be here. We know we've been here about 47 years. Yep, yep. 47 laps, 47 circuits. It's a very short time. But we'll always be here. It's not like we're going to go someplace. Really? There's no place to go. <laughs> Wait, you mean when our space suit's gone? Yeah, we'll still be here. I mean, here meaning like in the entirety of it. Because there's no way out. No, it's there's no, uh, you don't, you don't turn into nothing. So in a way, we've been here forever, but now we're just temporarily walking around on a planet going, oh, wow, we're here. Well, I mean, temporarily, I have to go get my thongs over here. And then I can temporarily walk further down. Well, why do you need your thongs? Well, I don't want to litter. They're plastic. They're rubber. That's a good point. And the tide's going out, so we better get our I thongs. Mean, think about that. Think about just what a tide is. There are these, there's the sun and the moon, and they're a long, long ways away. And yet, they exert their force over the fluids and the atmosphere and... The ocean moves. And it pulls away from the land. It pulls away from the land. Yeah, in a bulge. Literally a bulge. Twice a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when the bulges line up, the tides get big. And when the bulges are off-center, the tides are smaller. But yeah, four times a day. That is so amazing. I mean, there's really two tides, but there's a high and a low and a high and a low. So we say that there's four tides, but it's just it's just going out and coming back in twice. And it's so consistent. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the math is pretty straightforward. It's like it's the sun and it's the moon. People don't know this, but the atmosphere actually experiences tides, too. Anything, anything and everything. Uh, there's a... Like the weather experiences tides? Well, I mean the atmosphere. I don't know, some people say that there's, they, the sun and moon exert some sort of force on the weather, but just looking at the mathematics of it, it would be a very small percentage. Well, it is so cool to be walking on the earth, isn't it? Big fan of the earth, big fan of the earth. I love the earth. Go earth. <laughs> And most people don't seem to notice that this is so, that we're like here in space. Like they don't, they don't even realize it. Well, I think most people are really, really distracted. I mean, there's, there's so much to distract you from neighbors to kids to what's going on in the neighborhood. And now the neighborhood is kind of a global neighborhood. So everybody's got to worry about what everybody is doing all around the world. So, yeah, I mean, I think people know it somewhere down in their deep, deep subconscious, but they don't think about it very much. That's, that's what just trips me out, is that you can actually lose touch with reality. Yeah, and, and you know, they would, they would look at us or say to us, hey, you guys are losing touch with the reality. But it's like one of, one of us is getting wrapped up in a thought process. And the other one is getting wrapped up with what's actually out there. And what's actually out there is that we're, we're, on a, we're monkeys on a rock flying through space. And we're literally right now walking on this, the edge of the Pacific Ocean. And it's gorgeous. And there's seagulls and a few people walking in the distance and feel the sand on our toes and the sun is shining it's warm that's really happening yeah it's a magical existence yeah i feel bad for people it's an impoverished existence to to think and worry about all of these things that the other monkeys are the, the sounds they're making with their face holes and you know getting all wrapped up in the 
Did you hear that sound that monkey made with the space hole, Nick? Yeah, yeah, that monkey. You know, I mean, there's real evil out there. There's monkeys that do bad things to other monkeys for sure. And so I'm not completely ignorant to the fact that you've got to have militaries and stuff like that. But by and large, it's this big psychosis. It's this big, like, you know, it's this big fight over who gets the resources. It is hard because that is true. And monk, there are some mean monkeys out there. And the fact is, is that they've always been mean monkeys out there. Yeah, I mean, you got to have the mean monkeys and the nice monkeys. We're the nice monkeys, right? Yeah. And now we're back in the open space. There's lots of little monkeys, too. Yeah, there's some really cool places for little monkeys to hang out around here. Yeah, it's always good to see the little monkeys getting in touch with the reality from an early age. Yeah, if you think about it, this is this is when we're happiest, right? Or, you know, potentially we could be happiest. This is when we're not yet influenced by all of the sounds that the other monkey uh, noises are out there and all the worries that, and all the stresses and anxieties that those monkey noises make for each other. Now you've just got the water and pushing the sand into buildings and bridges. And, and you're running in your space suit. Yeah, you're just enjoying, you know, what it feels like to be alive yeah and you're not so concerned with a lot of the other bs yeah what are you wearing what are you doing who do you know yeah just the which monkeys do you know yeah and you know those anxieties are just transferred from the older monkeys that just you know never worked it out for themselves so they're you know they just want to continue to have the same yeah why is that they're just trying to work it out it's just this 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 thing that they're never really able to get their arms around. Everybody's trying to figure it out. But in reality, it's pretty simple. We're literally just walking on a planet in space. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see why, you know, some of the some of the old enlightened dudes are like throwing other guys out the window and being like, hey, you get it now? And I was like, yeah, just get out of your just get out of your head, you know? Yeah. Make, monkeys have a way of making things really complicated. Yeah, I mean, we got these big brains, and you know, we're just trying to, you know, fill our brains with sense, you know, or, you know, make make sense the world. But you know, the world is chaotic and it's complicated, and it's way too big for our brains to process. So we, yeah, you know, we let it chomp on things that we think. You know, make sense. You know, make patterns where there aren't patterns. And, you know, get tribal. It's all repeated stuff. But really, I think the main thing that brings me happiness and joy is just to be in nature as much as possible and just kind of relish the fact that, hey, for this short time, we actually get to be aware of ourselves and ourselves being the entire universe. Wow, <laughs> that's quite a right because wind- we're connected. That's a wind up and a pitch, <laughs> for sure. No, I mean we are, and it's it's like to try and convince somebody that is almost like trying to convince somebody that the Earth is round. It's like, well, show me, prove to me that you're not connected to the entire universe. <laughs> I mean, that's all there is. Right. And you're you're in it, right? Yeah. Well, you're connected to it. Oh, that's why it's just so silly that people are fighting over the color of the skin or what's in your you know underwear what's in your underwear you know with gender oh right it's like can't we just all freaking get along (laughs) monkeys come on well i mean if we had real stresses in in our world you know just to back up a little bit you know if people were really really fighting over things that mattered like they really were you know fighting over the last piece of meat and they were out crossing vast territories on foot and and some of them were dying you know and you don't have to go back that far to find those conditions people 250 years ago were crossing huge stretches of the u.s in wagons and a lot of them were dying and it's not that long ago no, it wasn't that long ago at all so you know we're a species that's adapted for stressful situations but for the last 80 100 years i mean there are no st- i mean there's wars but they're not fought locally they're fought someplace else and you know people just sit around and they don't really have any real stresses so you know because their brain is 
is adapted for stressful situations, they find things to stress about. That's what I think. And there's really nothing we should be fighting about. You know, it should be... Yeah, because we're kind of screwing up our habitat for the future monkeys. Yeah, and even that is, you know, something to just fight about. Because if you put all this emphasis on you know, not doing one thing, something else is going to happen. Think about nuclear pro- proliferation in the 70s. All these environmentalists were marching, don't don't put a nuclear reactor here, uh, you know, because you know, we don't want your nuclear waste and, it, you know, it's all that stuff. Well, I mean, people still needed power, so what did they do? They built coal-fired plants instead. Yeah. You know, so was that a better option? You know, people are going to need what they're going to need. They're going to destroy what they're going to destroy they're going to you know they're they're going to they're going to do what they're going to do so what we need to do is deal with the appetite and not the consumption so why is it that people feel like they got to eat so much why is it that people feel like they got to fight so much over resources why is that why is it they, that they have to hoard you know because i think we're taught that there's only one way for all of us to uh, succeed, and that is through a consumer-driven society. You know, advertising and convincing people that you know, if they just get this next thing, they'll be happier. That's what drives the whole machine. So, if people could be more satisfied, they'd probably be more immune to that messaging. You know, from advertisers, and it's but it's pervasive. It's not just advertisers; it's neighbors, and it's relatives. You know, all feeling like you know, unless you're doing better than the next guy, you're not really doing that well. Yeah. Simple. Well, on that note, I think minutes. we've said a lot. Is this our next podcast? I hope not. I don't <laughs> think we can put this out there. No, this is too. This is too under the sheets. It's too out there. I think people won't understand. I think they'll, you know, they'll misconstrue. Or As maybe people they'll are. love it. Oh, maybe they will. Yeah. Maybe they're like, oh my god, I feel like I was inside the O'Kelly's brain. Oh for no! How many minutes? 13 minutes. 13 minutes inside. I was with them on that beach, on the earth, flying through space (laughs) for the brief moment. Should we keep walking or should we go back? That is the question, Nick. Should we keep walking or should we go back? I'm cool with walking. 